Perhaps one of the most heated ongoing debates concerning the topic of religion is which one is the oldest. One of the prevailing theological views about religion is the archaeological evidence does not support the presence of religious practices by modern humans or Neanderthals prior or during the Middle Paleolithic period ranging from 300,000 to 50,000 BCE. However, as we discussed in part one, the shamanic forms of religion date back at least 500,000 years. Moreover, Contrary to theological academia, some of the earliest significant evidence of religious practices does indeed date from the Middle Paleolithic period. Intentional burial, particularly with grave goods, may be one of the earliest detectable forms of religious practice, since it may signify a concern for the dead that transcends daily life. The earliest undisputed human burial dates back 100,000 years. Human skeletal remains stained with red okra were discovered in Skull Cave in Israel. A variety of grave goods were present at the site, including the mandible of a wild boar in the arms of one of the skeletons. As we move into the Upper Paleolithic period, circa 40,000 BCE, we find the remains of one of the earliest known anatomically modern humans to be cremated. Around 38,000 BCE, the Aurignacian figurine, the oldest known zoomorphic sculpture in the world and one of the oldest known sculptures in general, was made. The sculpture has also been interpreted as anthropomorphic, giving human characteristics to an animal, although it may have represented a deity. Between 35,000 and 21,000 BCE, the oldest discovered Venus figurines appeared in graves. Some were deliberately broken or repeatedly stabbed, possibly representing the murders of the men with whom they were buried, or owing to some other unknown social dynamic. Also, clear examples of burials are present in Iberia, Wales, and Eastern Europe. These two incorporate the heavy use of red okra and various objects were included in the graves. When we reach the Neolithic period in the Younger Dryas, roughly 12,000 years ago, we find that noticeable burial activity has resumed. All these graves are delineated by the cave walls in large limestone blocks. The burials share several characteristics, such as the use of red okra and shell and mammoth ivory jewelry that go back thousands of years. They were now beginning to take on the form of modern cemeteries. Old burials were commonly redug and moved to make way for new ones, with the older bones often being gathered and cached together. Large stones may have acted as grave markers. Pairs of antlers were sometimes mounted on poles within the cave. This is compared to the modern practice of leaving flowers at a grave. It is during the pre-pottery Neolithic period that we come across Gobekli Tempe, the oldest religious site yet discovered anywhere. It includes circles of erective massive T-shaped stone pillars, the world's oldest known megaliths, decorated with abstract, enigmatic pictograms and carved animal reliefs. The site near the home place of original wild wheat was built before the so-called Neolithic Revolution where we find the beginning of agriculture and animal husbandry around 9,000 BCE. But the construction of Gobekli Tempe implies organization of an advanced order not hitherto associated with Paleolithic societies. The site abandoned around the time the first agriculture society started is still being excavated and analyzed, and thus might shed light on the significance it had for the region's older foraging communities, as well as for the general history of religions. In essence, when it comes to the question of the oldest religion, there really is no solid answer because the written record only extends back a bit over 5,000 years. So as we start out in the ancient era, we will base our chronology on the written record as discovered thus far. (laughs) 
It comes as no surprise that the first recognized written record of a religion originates where the first written language was discovered, Mesopotamia. When religion developed in Mesopotamia is unknown, but the first written records of religious practice date to circa 3500 BCE from Sumer. Mesopotamian religion refers to the religious beliefs and practices of the civilizations of ancient Mesopotamia, particularly Sumer, Akkad, Assyria, and Babylonia, between circa 3500 BCE and 400 CE, after which they largely gave way to Syriac Christianity. The religious development of Mesopotamia and Mesopotamian culture in general was not particularly influenced by the movements of the various peoples into and throughout the area, particularly in the south. Rather, Mesopotamian religion was a consistent and coherent tradition which adapted to the internal needs of its adherents over millennia of development. The earliest undercurrents of Mesopotamian religious thought involved the worship of forces of nature as providers of sustenance. In the third millennium BCE, objects of worship were personified and became an expansive cast of divinities with particular functions. The last stages of Mesopotamian polytheism, which developed in the second and first millenniums, introduced greater emphasis on personal religion and structured the gods into a monarchical hierarchy with the national god being the head of the pantheon. Mesopotamian religion finally declined with the spread of Iranian religions and with the Christianization of Mesopotamia. The first written records of Egyptian religious practice come from around 3400 BCE in the pre-dynastic period in Egypt. The beginnings of Egyptian religion extend into prehistory, though evidence comes only from the sparse and ambiguous archaeological record. Careful burials during the pre-dynastic period imply that the people of this time believed in some form of an afterlife. At the same time, animals were ritually buried, a practice which may reflect the development of zoomorphic deities like those found in the later religion. The early dynastic period began with the unification of Egypt around 3000 BCE. This event transformed Egyptian religion as some deities rose to national importance and the cult of the divine pharaoh became the center focus of religious activity. During the Old Kingdom, the priesthoods of the major deities attempted to organize the complicated national pantheon into groups linked by their mythology and worshipped in a single cult center. In contrast, with the great size of the pyramid complexes, temples to gods remained comparatively small, suggesting that official religion in this period emphasized the cult of the divine king more than the direct worship of deities. The funeral rituals and architecture of this time greatly influenced the more elaborate temples and rituals used in worshiping the gods in later periods. In the 22nd century BCE, the Old Kingdom collapsed into the disorder of the first intermediate period. Eventually, rulers from Thebes reunified the Egyptian nation in the Middle Kingdom. In this new Egyptian state, personal piety grew more important and was expressed more freely in writing, a trend that continued in the New Kingdom. The Middle Kingdom crumbled in the Second Intermediate Period, but the country was again reunited by the Thebian rulers who became the first pharaohs of the New Kingdom. Under the new regime, Amun became the supreme state god. He was syncretized with Ra, the long-established patron of kingship, and his temple at Karnak in Thebes became Egypt's most important religious center. The New Kingdom religious order was disrupted when Akhenaten acceded and replaced Amun with the Aten as the state god. Eventually, he eliminated the official worship of most other gods and moved Egypt's capital to a new city at Armana. This part of Egyptian history, the Armana period, is named after this. Akhenaten's successors restored the traditional religious system and eventually, they dismantled all Atenist monuments. 
Before the Amarna period, popular religion had trended toward more personal relationships between worshippers and their gods. Akhenaten's changes had reversed this trend, but once the traditional religion was restored, there was a backlash. The populace began to believe that the gods were much more directly involved in daily life. The pharaoh was correspondingly more human and less divine. The importance of oracles as a means of decision-making grew, as did the wealth and influence of the oracle's interpreters, the priesthood. These trends undermined the traditional structure of society and contributed to the breakdown of the new kingdom. In the first millennium BCE, Egypt was significantly weaker than in earlier times, and in several periods foreigners seized the country and assumed the position of pharaoh. The importance of the pharaoh continued to decline and the emphasis on popular piety continued to increase. Animal cults, a characteristically Egyptian form of worship, became increasingly popular in this period, possibly as a response to the uncertainty and foreign influence of the time. In the 4th century BCE, Egypt became a Hellenistic kingdom under the Ptolemaic dynasty which assumed the pharaonic role, maintaining the traditional religion and building or rebuilding many temples. The kingdom's Greek ruling class identified the Egyptian deities with their own. From this cross-cultural syncretism emerged Serapis, a god who combined Osiris and Apis with characteristics of Greek deities and who became very popular among the Greek population. Nevertheless, for the most part, the two belief systems remained separate, and the Egyptian deities remained Egyptian. Ptolemaic-era beliefs changed little after Egypt became a province of the Roman Empire in 30 BCE, with the Ptolemaic kings replaced by distant emperors. As the empire weakened, official temples fell into decay, and without their centralizing influence, religious practice became fragmented and localized. Meanwhile, Christianity spread across Egypt, and in the 3rd and 4th centuries CE, edicts by Christian emperors and iconoclasm by local Christians eroded traditional beliefs. While it persisted among the populace for some time, Egyptian religion slowly faded away. The Indus Valley Civilization was a Bronze Age civilization that existed between 3300 and 1300 BCE, and its antecedents dating as far back as 7000 to 6000 BCE during the Neolithic period. The religion and belief system of the Indus Valley people have received considerable attention, especially from the view of identifying precursors to deities and religious practices of Indian religions that later developed in the area. However, due to the sparsity of evidence, which is open to varying interpretations, and the fact that the Indus script remains undeciphered, the conclusions are partly speculative and largely based on a retrospective view from a much later Hindu perspective. Nevertheless, some assumptions about the Indus Valley Civilization religion are Number one, the Indus people probably worshipped a mother goddess in addition to male and female deities. Number two, they may have worshipped a father god who might be a progenitor of the race and probably was a prototype of Siva as the lord of the animals. Number three, they were familiar with some form of yoga and meditation. Number four, they believed in a tree of life which is depicted in the seals as a pipal or acacia tree defended by a guardian spirit against an evil force symbolized as a tiger. In the seals, the guardian spirit is depicted variously as a bull, a snake, a goat, and a mythical creature or animal. Number five, they worship fertility symbols such as round stones and pierced stones. Number six, they might have also believed in magical rituals, charms, and amulets, and so also in spirits and demons. 7. The Great Bath of Mohenjo-Daro was probably a prototype koval or sacred tank which are found in the ancient temples of southern India where people might have taken purification baths or participated collectively in ritual baths on important occasions. And 8. 
going by the number of animals in the Indus seals and the presence of Babs suggests that they might have used water and animals in sacrificial rituals as offerings or for expiation and ritual cleansing. In contrast to contemporary Egyptian and Mesopotamian civilizations, Indus Valley lacks any monumental palaces, even though excavated cities indicate the society possessed the requisite engineering knowledge. This may suggest that religious ceremonies, if any, may have been largely confined to individual homes, small temples, or the open air. Several sites have been proposed as possibly devoted to religious purpose, but at present, only the Great Bath at Mohenjo-Daro is widely thought to have been so used as a place for ritual purification. The funerary practices of the Harappan civilization are marked by fractional burial, in which the body is reduced to skeletal remains by exposure to the elements before final internment, and even cremation. Long before ancient Greek civilization developed, the Minoan civilization on the island of Crete was engaged in religious practices that would become the foundation for the Greeks. Modern scholars have reconstructed it almost totally on the basis of archaeological remains rather than texts. The Minoans seem to have prominently worshipped a great goddess, which had previously led to the belief that their society was matriarchal. However, it is now known that this was not the case. The Minoan pantheon featured many deities, among which a young, spear-wielding male god is also prominent. Some scholars see in the Minoan goddess a female divine solar figure. Although some depictions of women may be images of worshippers and priestesses officiating at religious ceremonies, goddesses seem to include a mother goddess of fertility, a goddess of animals, and female protectors of cities, the household, the harvest, and the underworld. They are often represented by serpents, birds, poppies, or an animal on the head. The origins of Judaism, according to the current historical view, lie in the Bronze Age amidst polytheistic ancient Semitic religions, specifically evolving out of ancient Canaanite polytheism, then coexisting with Babylonian religion and syncretizing elements of Babylonian belief into the worship of Yahweh as reflected in the early prophetic books of the Hebrew Bible. Although Judaism as a religion first appears in Greek records during the Hellenistic period, and the earliest mention of Israel is inscribed in their Merneptah stela dated 1213 to 1203 BCE. Religious literature tells the story of Israelites going back at least as far as 1500 BCE. During the Iron Age, the Israelite religion became distinct from the Canaanite polytheism out of which it evolved. This process began with the development of Yahwehism, the monolatristic worship of Yahweh that gave acknowledgement to the existence but suppressed the worship of other Canaanite gods. Later, this monolatristic belief cemented into a strict monotheistic belief and worship of Yahweh alone with the rejection of the existence of all other gods, whether Canaanite or foreign. During the Babylonian captivity of the 6th and 5th centuries BCE, certain circles within the exiled Judaites in Babylon refined pre-existing ideas about their Yahweh-centric monolatrism, election, divine law, and covenant into a strict monotheistic theology which came to dominate the former kingdom of Judah in the following centuries. From the 5th century BCE until 70 CE, Israelite religion developed into the various theological schools of Second Temple Judaism besides Hellenistic Judaism in the Diaspora. Second Temple eschatology was significantly influenced by Zoroastrianism. The text of the Hebrew Bible was redacted into its extant form in this period and possibly also canonized as well. The religion of the Olmec people significantly influenced the social development and mythological worldview of Mesoamerica. 
Scholars have seen echoes of Olmec religion in the subsequent religions and mythologies of nearly all later pre-Columbian era banded eye god, feather serpent, fish or snake monster cultures. The first Mesoamerican civilization, the Olmecs, developed on the present-day Mexican southern Gulf Coast in the centuries before 1200 BCE. The culture lasted until roughly 400 BCE, at which time their center at La Venta lay abandoned. The Olmec culture is often considered a mother culture to later Mesoamerican cultures. There is no surviving direct account of the Olmecs' religious beliefs, unlike the Mayan Popol Vuh or the Aztecs with their many codices and conquistador accounts. Archaeologists, therefore, have to rely on other techniques to reconstruct Olmec beliefs. They have employed typological analysis of Olmec iconography and art, comparison to later, better documented pre-Columbian cultures, and comparisons to modern-day cultures of the indigenous peoples of the Americas. The latter two techniques assume that there is a continuity extending from Olmec times through later Mesoamerican cultures to the present day. This assumption is called the continuity hypothesis. Using these techniques, researchers have discerned several similarities.